Greetings everyone, I'm Mike, Whiskey Alpha 9, Papa India Echo, and I'm here to do a little bit of a update and status on Ham Radio Deluxe version 6.9, and I'm going to do a little bit of a demonstration video. And um, so let's jump right into it. So we're now in the final stages of the logbook rewrite. That'll be version 6.9. I'm going to show you a little bit about that today. And some folks would say, well, it's been a long time. You guys have been working on this. And I'll say, yeah, it's been a long time. Um, I'm as impatient as everyone else. But we're effectively rewriting the entire application from scratch. And I'll get to why that is in a couple moments. But um, it's going to be worth the wait. And um, so looking forward to it. Some folks would say, well, you know, um, you know, if you don't have anything new to tell us, don't tell us anything at all. Others would say you go too long without telling us anything. So I'm kind of in the middle. Uh, I want to tell you something when we've got something to say. And um, so with the demo that I'll do today, we'll jump into that. But let's talk about what we're trying to accomplish here. Um, the yellow space is really kind of the timeline for the development. And I don't have any specific dates here, nor am I going to give you any specific dates today because um, I've, you know, I've found that specific dates with software development are kind of tough targets to live by. And so I'll tell you what we're doing and where we're at. Um, we've been doing development on 6.9, which is the logbook rewrite. And once we're, once we're done with the logbook rewrite, and I'm hopeful we'll have a, a beta available prior to Dayton, this year 2024 and um, maybe an open beta I don't know how we're going to do it but um, we'll see how it goes but uh, that rewrite will have um, will eliminate Microsoft Access and move to SQLite um, a lot of other cleanup and features in there and then uh, once that's done we'll be able to do more regular or quarterly updates with logbook while we do the rig control rewrite. And then once we get the rig control rewrite done, then we'll do quarterly, quarterly updates for rig control and uh, logbook content while we do the DM780 rewrite. And we'll just continue this through rotor control and satellite tracking. And then uh, when we're done, we can have a version seven. Uh, that's a culmination of, uh, of all this work with the possibility of having a contest capability added in HRD programmer, which is really kind of a, um, a, uh, a method for um, programming the memories in your HT or UHF VHF radio or some of the um, smaller footprint uh, radios or frankly HF radios. That's our intention. Um, HRD global view will be a replacement for, um, mapper. Um, it'll have a lot of the feature and functionality that you're used to seeing in other programs, plus a lot more. Uh, we want to be able to run on Mac Linux as well as Windows 32 or 64 bit, multilingual. There's a lot of opportunity there, but in order to do that, we have to rewrite every single application. Um, as most of you know, Ham Radio Deluxe has been around for quite a few years, um, I'll probably 25 years or so now. And it was originally developed to run on Windows XP. Well, we all kissed Windows XP goodbye a long time ago, but we need to actually kiss the code base goodbye and re modernize it, replace it and modernize it. So that's what we're doing. So like I said, the end state will, have, um, will be multi-platform, multilingual, 64-bit. Uh, um, we'll be able to quickly add radios without the need for a software release because the radio parameter files will live outside of code, which today they're all hard coded inside the application. So you have to be a developer, which I'm not, uh, in order to um, add new radios, which is a taxing, um, taxing kind of thing to do in the midst of all the change. And um, we'll be able to quickly add new features. So that's what we're trying to get to with the end state. Well, what, what, how much effort are we putting into this? Um, you know, part of the reason for this slide is to just impress upon everyone that uh, we're not just sitting around. <laughs> We've got six people 
working full time. And um, if you think about that, that's 12,480 hours a year. And since I'm not a developer, then we pay them an hourly rate. So if you take your favorite hourly rate times 12,480, you get what I call a strong level of commitment to the future of Ham Radio Deluxe. And that's what we're doing. Um, the company's doing well outside of trying to get the software development done. So, you know, we're, we're able to fund that through uh, the sales of uh, software and renewals. So your support helps fund this uh, software development and what what it doesn't fund. I, uh, I take it out of my own pocket. So that's what we're doing with uh, the level of investment we're putting into this. It's a big, uh, big amount of work and we're going to continue to put um, you know, six, six full-time people in this, um, until it's all done. And so here's what we're going to do. We're going to jump into a demo of 6.9. So let's go right to it. Okay. This is going to be just a quick demo of 6.9. We've got this running on a virtual machine hosted, uh, on the, uh, on the web and, um, we, uh, update it so we can test things. So I'm just going to walk around some of the new features um, and some of the things you'll see in the new version 6.9. First of all, it's running SQLite. You can see that we've got 10,000 records out of my log uh, here in this database. And um, one of the new things, if I, I'm just clicking down here on a call sign, and you can see that it goes out and pulls up the image from qrz.com. If there is one, um, the tables here are meant to show all the detail from, um, you know, this would be like your leaderboard. Um, this won't scroll. It'll fill the whole entire width. It just happens to not be sized right now. And then um, the, you'll see the country info here as well as the uh, IOTA info here. So you'll be able to see work status at a glance. So let's, uh, let's look at another example here for a moment. I'm going to open this QSL. And... Um, I've worked them a few times, so I can see all the information about this. That's not changed. But the point I'm trying to make here is that all of the work status here, so this is, you know, work status by call sign, country, continent, zone, iota, and grid. And this is the kind of information that will get populated over, over here in the lookup pane. So if I came back over and put in, um, I'm going to clear this. And let it look this one up. And uh, this is the information here that I would normally expect to see out of that QSO. So this is what's meant to be over in these tables here. But you can get it at a glance so you know whether or not uh, the station you're calling or hearing uh, is something you need to run off and work real quick. Uh, the country tab just has the entity information. Contact is, you know, Look up information QRZ if they have their age or email address listed there. Location. Uh, location has a few new fields uh, for people who use the um, need the region or uh, US, uh, USA counties uh, entity and so on. They can put that here. Sometimes they differ from the actual county. Um, the IOTA would go in here. Um, antenna, satellite, award contest, custom, none of these have changed. In my station, you'll see that you will be able to enter in your my station data for your POTA or SOTA references. So this is if you're an activator, and I'll show you that in my station in just a moment. Uh, propagation tab hasn't changed. Well, there are some, some new fields here. Um, the doc information's there and so on. Um, all of the QSL, um, information is in a single tab now. So before there was a logbook of the world tab, an EQSL tab, and a QSL tab. And if we kept doing that for every service that we uploaded, we would have 10,000 tabs. So we decided to put it all in one. It's handy because you can just see everything in one tab, everything at a glance. Then uh, uploads will show you the status of the uploads into various different services. Um, if they happen to be working from a POTA, you can uh, enter that here. Um, you can select it out of the list. Or if they gave you their POTA park number, you can type it in and let it do a lookup. I think I didn't put enough zeros in there, so I'm going to add another one. 
and that gets me this one so i'm going to enter that and then you can see all the information um, would go in there and um, same thing for soda and wwff and this information gets updated regularly you don't have to down i mean it downloads the updates automatically so um, that's pretty cool this one's got almost 60,000 records in it uh, the poda one has um, almost 54,000 records in it. So a lot of activity there. Another thing you'll notice is that we've got the um, RX and TX frequencies here. So if you have uh, information or if you work in split uh, or if you're doing satellite, it'll record the uplink, downlink, or the main and sub VFOs or VFOA and VFOB, depending on how you have it set up. If, you've, if you don't have any of that data in there at the moment, then obviously it won't show anything. So uh, that's what I wanted to show on that. Let's go and look at um, the uh, my station information. And my station is where you would put in your park um, if you're working from a park and then the uh, activity that you work from a park or a summit would would be populated there so that's basically the same thing as what i showed you a while ago except this automates the process of populating it in a new qso so you would use that um, and create a location or a station uh, to be used just for that purpose another thing to point out by the way is that at the bottom very bottom row we've made space for the most recent announcement the most recent wcy weather and wwv weather there so you can see all that is at a glance uh, the DX histogram will show you uh, the number of spots um, by band and mode. So you can see where all the activity is, solar cycle progression, all that stuff is still the way it has always been. So pretty helpful stuff, pretty cool, and things are moving right along. So I wanted to share a little bit of where we are. This is a brand new application. It's uh, uh, new code. It's meant to look like um, the very familiar version we already have, but it's... Um, based in a brand new code that we've written over the course of the last few months. So thanks. And we'll go back to the presentation now. Okay, finally, I just want to thank everybody for watching the video uh, or reading the newsletter. And um, thank you for your um, support of Ham Radio Deluxe. It means a lot to us. And it's, a, it's an effort that we want to make sure continues for all the people who use and enjoy it. So, so thanks. And 73 from Whiskey Alpha 9, Papa, India Echo.